From Big Dream to Big Top, Interview. This month, Teen Talk Magazine interviews Mike Quintus Bessie, an aerialist with the Empire Circus. Mike tells TT about the history of the circus, his job, and circus life. Editor's note. Englishman Philip Astley, 1742 to 1814, is one of the most important figures in circus history. He was a skilled equestrian who opened a popular riding school and performing arena, and then became a circus impresario when he built Astley's Amphitheater in London in 1770. Astley worked hard, took risks, gained money and affluence, and was living proof that there is no luck except when there is discipline. Mike, many circus performers are born into a family of performers, but your parents are dentists. What made you want to join the circus? When I was quite young, I read a book about Philip Astley. I was fascinated and started taking tumbling classes. Astley is known as the father of the modern circus because his circus is the template for the circuses we see today. How did Astley go about founding a circus? From the onset, Astley had a passion for horses. He enlisted in a cavalry regiment and then took up performing. One of his specialties was to retrieve a handkerchief from the ground while his horse cantered. He could maintain his balance better if his horse traveled in circles, so that's why he had a ring for his circus. Back then, animals and trick riders were the stars, and Astley's circus supposedly featured a horse that could perform card tricks and a pig that could solve math problems. I would pay to see that. What was a typical show like back in Astley's time? Astley staged massive spectacles, featuring a minimum of 100 horses and riders. There would also be fireworks, music, magicians, tightrope walkers, clowns, performing dogs, you name it. Well, except for wild animal acts. That innovation came later. There was a stage, a circular pit, and audience galleries. There was no partition between the stage and the arena so the shows were held simultaneously. The amphitheater was rebuilt a number of times after fires, and it was eventually demolished in the 1890s because bad decisions and bad luck left the owner in arrears. Meanwhile, Astley retired from performing when he was still in his 30s, but he was often the ringmaster, dressed in his customary military costume. The story goes that although Astley was charming, he also had a quick temper. I guess even circus folk aren't always happy-go-lucky. It's a mistake to assume that circus performers are happy and jovial 100% of the time. We're all crotchety sometimes, even clowns. Besides a taste for adventure, what makes a good aerialist? You have to have a strong, taut body, and you must be alert, quick, and nimble to fly through the air and catch your partners. Do you feel as if the circus is your home? I do, although I know some people don't care for circuses. They think the atmosphere is a little creepy and sinister, or they're uncomfortable with crowds, or they harbor an image of elephants and manacles and chains. It makes me cringe to hear that animals are abused. I believe most circuses treat their animals with kindness and respect, the same way Philip Astley cared for his beloved horses. Affluence. Affluence. Affluence is a noun meaning wealth, riches, or prosperity, or great abundance. A person may live simply despite great affluence. Or the variety of goods in a typical American supermarket is a reflection of this country's affluence. Now let's hear you say affluence. Try the word again. Arrears. Arrears. Arrears is a plural noun meaning unpaid and overdue debts, or an unfinished duty. People who are in arrears on their taxes can work out a payment schedule with the Internal Revenue Service. 
and a person may have to work overtime to catch up on a project that is in arrears. Now you try arrears. One more time. Cascade. Cascade. Cascade functions as two parts of speech. It can be used as a noun, meaning a steep, narrow waterfall, or something falling or rushing forth in quantity. A cascade of snow may tumble from a roof during a storm. Or, cascade can be used as a verb that means to flow downward like a waterfall. Sunlight may cascade through a skylight in the roof of a house. And, molten lava may cascade down the slopes of a volcano. Now you say cascade. Repeat the word. Cringe. Cringe. Cringe is a verb meaning to shrink back or hide in fear or submissiveness. Many dogs cringe when they hear fireworks or other very loud noises. Also, young recruits may cringe inwardly when their drill sergeant barks an order. Now it's your turn. Say cringe. And again. Crotchety. Crotchety. Crotchety is an adjective meaning cranky and ill-tempered or full of odd whims. The crotchety old miser Ebenezer Scrooge may be the best-known character created by Charles Dickens. And in most families, there is at least one person who is crotchety and eccentric. Your turn. Say crotchety. Once again. Immobile. Immobile. Immobile is an adjective, meaning not movable or not moving. Some drawers of a piece of furniture may be immobile and merely decorative. Also, because of a serious accident, highway traffic may be backed up and immobile for miles. Your turn. Say immobile. One more time. Impassable. Impassable. Impassable is an adjective, meaning blocked so nothing can go through. After a cave-in, some tunnels in a mine may be impassable. Or, hikers may find some forest trails impassable. Now let's hear you say impassable. And again. Innovation. Innovation. Innovation is a noun, meaning something new or the act of introducing something new. Some people are by nature reluctant to accept any kind of innovation. And innovations in medical technology are making it easier for doctors to diagnose and treat seriously ill patients. And Innovation is the lifeblood of the computer software industry. Now you say innovation. Repeat the word. Jovial. Jovial. Jovial is an adjective meaning good-humored or merry. A person may treasure an evening of jovial conversation with good friends. Also, a jovial host and hostess will take the time to make each guest feel welcome. Now it's your turn. 
Say jovial. Once again. Manacle. Manacle. Manacle functions as two parts of speech. It can be used as a noun, meaning a handcuff or anything that chains or confines. A prisoner who is being moved from a jail to a courthouse may wear manacles on both wrists and ankles. Or, manacle can be used as a verb that means to chain or restrain. A totalitarian government may be determined to manacle the lives of the people it rules. Now you try manacle. Once more. Marshal. Marshal. Marshal is an adjective meaning warlike or relating to war, the army, or military life. A Veterans Day parade may include bands playing martial music. And for centuries, Japan was governed by martial rulers called shoguns. Now let's hear you say martial. Try the word again. Minimum. Minimum. Minimum functions as two parts of speech. It can be used as a noun that means the smallest possible amount. If you are saving for something special, you should try to keep your expenses to a minimum. Minimum can also be used as an adjective, meaning the lowest permissible or possible. It is advisable to pay more than the minimum amount on credit card debt each month. Now you say minimum. Repeat the word. Nimble. Nimble. Nimble is an adjective meaning quick and skillful in movement or clever. Orangutans and other tree dwelling apes are nimble climbers. Or a new film may be praised for its nimble and witty dialogue. It's your turn. Say nimble. And again. Onset. Onset. Onset is a noun, meaning the beginning or start of something violent or destructive, or an attack. The early onset of winter may take some people by surprise. And a general may not have time to position his troops to withstand the onset of the enemy. Now you say onset. Try the word again. Partition. Partition. Partition functions as two parts of speech. It can be used as a noun, meaning something that divides, or the act of dividing something into parts or sections. In some high rise apartment buildings, partitions are used to separate adjoining terraces. Or, partition can be used as a verb. That means to divide into parts or shares. In 1989, the wall that partitioned the city of Berlin was torn down. Now it's your turn. Try the word partition. One more time. Perishable. Perishable. Perishable is an adjective meaning likely to spoil or decay. Perishable items must be packed carefully for mailing. Also, many skills are perishable unless they are practiced regularly. Now you say perishable. Repeat the word. Rich. 
retrieve, retrieve. Retrieve is a verb meaning to find and bring back or to put right. Divers may be used to retrieve the wreckage of a plane that has crashed at sea. Or, a person who has gone bankrupt may find it difficult to retrieve a good credit rating. Your turn. Say retrieve. One more time. Sinister. Sinister. Sinister is an adjective meaning appearing evil or dangerous or threatening evil or harm. An amusement park's sinister haunted house may be especially popular on Halloween. And a sinister spy master is the villain in many thrillers. Now you say sinister. And again. Taught. Taught. Taught is an adjective meaning tightly drawn or tense, or neat and in good order. A needleworker may use metal or wooden hoops to keep fabric taut while embroidering it. Or, most captains prefer to run a taut ship. Well, you know the drill by now. Say taut. And again. Template. Template. Template is a noun meaning a pattern, typically in the form of metal, wood, or plastic. Here are a few ways in which template can be used. We used a template while cutting the circles so that they would all be the same size. The seamstress made a template to serve as a guide for cutting the fabric for the pillows. Now you say template. Try the word again. Template. Template. Template is a noun, meaning something that is used as a model to imitate. Here are a few ways in which template can be used. Our teacher explained that Anika's excellent presentation was a template for the class to follow. The Olympic athlete's training schedule became a template on which I based my own. Now you say template. Try the word again.